All right, y'all, y'all ready? Y'all ready? Ladies and gentlemen, are y'all ready for the one and only? I don't know. She is like, to me, she's like, she's like everything, y'all. When I look at her streaming room, I be thinking I'm looking at my streaming room. I don't know if it's still up in the background. If not, you better go put it up right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> Nah, I'm messing with you. But, yo, listen, shout out to Green Eyed Goddess. It is such a pleasure to be interviewing her right now, y'all, and learning about her and her journey, her past, her present, her future, y'all. For those of you who are new to exclusive interviews on POF and Meet Me, okay, exclusive interview dives into a, a person past present and future it's a mini autobiography of their life and if you're interested as well as um uh having your interview done please have no fear but hit up top batch medusa okay and he'll set you up and schedule you the good thing about this is your fans you can invite your fans and your fans get to learn a little bit more about you and learn about things that we don't necessarily talk about on stream Okay, so this is a very special moment to have Green Eye Goddess coming to the stage. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please, please, please make some noise. Let me make sure I'm doing this right. Make some noise for the one we call Green Eyed Goddess. <laughs> Welcome, hey, Green Good Nine. morning, good afternoon, Donna and Ro. Let's go. What's up? What's up? What's up? How thank you feeling? You, thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm blessed. I, I told Medusa that I would be here early to ease my uh, anxiety of being nervous and stressed. And this is what he do to me. Thank you, Medusa. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. I love to see it. And thank you for stepping in early, even though you're supposed to go at like yes, one o'clock. I, I, I really do appreciate yes. that. All right. So we we gonna start we'll off. I know you're a bit nervous. Okay. Thank you, Donna. Right. <laughs> you know, Donna, I forgot you was in the box, boo. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my lovely wife. Okay, she's back on mute, y'all. But my lovely wife Donna Cooks, she will be uh, uh hosting uh Green Eye Goddess as well with me, okay, alongside of me. All right, um, so Green Eye Goddess, we like to start off real easy, especially I know you're nervous and stuff. Um, just start off by telling us about your journey of how you got onto this app. Which app you downloaded first? Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> so, um, let's see. When I originally decided to down POF, um, I was in a relationship, but I was ready to come out. Mm. Um, you know, it had been a few years of up and down, roller coaster, finding out things, you know, and I'll be How many is like, a few years? Uh, 17, 18, 19, 20, 11, 12, 13, about four years. Mm. Four years of you know not such a good relationship and me knowing that I deserved better um when I started the relationship you know everything was peaches and cream you know it was beautiful always um, <laughs> yeah and then you know later along the line uh I found out that he had multiple wives which is normal for the culture so you know, it was a big surprise to me and it was a big shock because me knowing who I am and that I would never, ever stand for anything like that in my life to be wife number three. I was like, oh, no, I got to get out of this, you know, but I was kind of like in a bubble because I had just relocated to a new state with no family, no friends in this state residing at the time. And so I kind of felt kind of trapped to him because it was like that was the only person I knew being that we had a relationship, but knowing that I wanted better. So that is what made me download POF and, you know, try to make friends and try to get back into the dating scene so that I could find somebody, hopefully that was for me. Mm. Yes. <laughs> so you felt 
trapped. I and you and and how did you know about POF? What out of all of the apps you could have downloaded, why POF? That's a good answer. <laughs> I mean, question. Sorry. So around 2015, um, at that time, I was married, and my brother was residing with me at the time. Um, I was waiting for my husband to come from another country, and so my brother had POF on his phone, and he was, you know, dating girls. This was in 2015, 16. He was meeting girls. He had, you know, moved to where I was living at the time, Utah. And, you know, he was trying to meet girls and hook up with girls and stuff. And I was like, why are you on this, this data site? Like, this is trash when you can just meet people in real life, you know? Right. And so he would spend hours and hours on this site, you know, browsing girls and checking girls. I'm not even sure if the live was live then in 2015. But right. he was spending hours. Was it? It wasn't. Okay. Yeah. So he was spent hours and hours browsing and checking girls. And and then I was in that, that mindset that I would never date anybody on a dating site or online period for that matter, you know? Right. And then um, later down the years when I moved here and the guy that I was dating at the time, he had the app on his phone. So I was like, why do you have this app if we're in a relationship? <laughs> you know and so me being a person that I am I said okay let me download it to then <laughs> so that is how I downloaded the app um I didn't really use it during that time I kind of like searched you know check my dms because my dms is off the chain like I had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of messages and I couldn't even get through them so you know every now and then I look at the profile picture see one that's kind of cute and I might send them a hi or respond but nothing's too serious you know right yeah and so wow. when I really 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 got into the app um I started to go to this dj stream uh, he was a DJ. He would have like the party style. You could get in a box, you could dance, you could dress up. And, you know, it was like a party away from the club scene. You could be in your own house, having drinks, still look cute and have fun. And so that is actually my first stream that I ever went to on an app. And, you know, it, it was really, really fun, you know, and I kind of got stuck even in that bubble. I kind of got stuck in that bubble. Like, I wouldn't go. I didn't know anything about other streamers or, you know, networking and things like that. I would just go to that one stream. And after a little while, the guy recommended, you know, you should stream. You should stream. And so, yeah, that's kind of like how I, you know, downloaded POF and I found out about it. And then I started to get a little deeper, deeper, deeper in. And here we are now, three years. Here we are, three Here years are. later. So <laughs> yes. let me ask you this. What country was he from? My husband. Yeah, your husband. What country was your husband from? <laughs> he was from Ethiopia, but we got married in Jerusalem. Wow. Yes. And how did y'all meet? Yes, that is a, an amazing question again. <laughs> So uh, I believe the app was called Tango some years ago. I remember and, Tango. Yes. And so I was living in, okay, I don't know if I shared that. Tango but, better let your man go. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I so, just made that up, y'all. <laughs> I, I didn't really share with you guys where I was living at the time. So I'm originally from Chicago. Um, after high school, I moved to Utah, Salt Lake City. So it's kind of really, really, really boring. So that is kind of how I found myself on these apps, searching, trying to find uh, people like me that, you know, I could connect with. Because in Utah, um, it's a religious state that's predominantly Mormon and predominantly Caucasian. So, you know, for me to be able to meet people like myself, I didn't see it every day. So I would go to these sites to try to hopefully connect with somebody that was more like me. Um, the Tango app. I was chatting with someone 
And, you know, like I said, I wasn't really into meeting people in real life, you know, maybe messaging mm -hmm. or whatever when I was bored. But this guy would not give up. He kept messaging me, messaging, messaging me to take me out to dinner. Like, uh, you know, you don't have to meet me at the hotel because he was in town visiting. Uh, at the time, he was working for the Prince of Saudi Arabia. So they're from Ethiopia. He was working for the Prince of Saudi Arabia. And he kept asking me, you know, let me take you out to dinner. Let me take you out to dinner. And so one day I took him up on that offer and I'm telling you, it blew my mind. I had never saw things at this level. As I said, this was the Prince. So go everything, like go dishes, go plates, go, you know, because I guess this is how they live in Saudi Arabia. And so, yeah, I was blown away. Once again, the money that he was investing, you know, just giving me chump spending money every day, 500, 500, go shopping because he worked from like 12 o'clock to 12 o'clock, okay? So during his work hours, he wanted me to have fun. And you know, he was sending me on shopping sprees and doing his thing. So I was getting, you know, infatuated with this, you know, like, oh my God, I never had it like this in my life that, you know, just give it away like that. So <laughs> we started dating and dating and, you know, uh, what I didn't know is that they travel with him. So everywhere they go, he probably do this to all the girls. So I started wow. to get jealous because when he went to the next place, which was California, he started ignoring me, not answering my calls, you know, just like treating me like a sad or something. And I was really getting irritated. I was really upset. So I'll say that we dated for like two or three months. Now he invited me to California. So I went to California to visit him and, you know, party, same thing, you know, the luxury living, the luxury life. We stayed in the Beverly Hills, you know, all of this luxury stuff. So I was just like, wow, <laughs> I just feel like a queen. So when he took all of these things away from me, you know, I wanted a way to get back at him. So I went deep. I went really, really, really deep. Um, I started chatting his brother on the internet. Yeah, his brother was in Israel. So I started chatting his brother as if I don't even know him or, you know, I was like, how are you? Who are you? I was like, you ever been to America? He like, no, 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 but I have a brother, but I play like I don't know any of this. So I stopped talking to him, the guy I was dating here, and I started talking with the brother that was in Israel. So me and the brother got closer and closer and closer. And we started to plan a wedding. Yeah. And so I went to Israel to marry his brother. Yeah. I know. I'm sorry. I look so bad right now. <laughs> now, wait. Did you do that on purpose or did you actually start to fall for the brother? No, it was kind of. Okay, I'll tell you like this. I wanted to get back at him. I wanted to kind of like hurt him. You know what I'm saying? I, how, after how many years did you do that? How how long? Oh, it wasn't years. It was months, like two months. Two months, was, and then you was like, all right, I'm going to get back at your ass. Mm, yeah. With your brother. Exactly. Okay. And so we went to Now, him wait, was yeah. that when, when you first initially met? Did he fly you to Jerusalem? No. So what happened was when we first met, it was just talking online. You know what I'm saying? And then he had like his uncle or someone that was a doctor in another country to send me all of my travel arrangements and things. But it wasn't just for a visit. It was actually to come there to get married. So, you know, they sent the money, funded my trip and everything. And, you know, I flew to Jerusalem and got married. So this is the crazy part. I stopped talking to him and he also stopped talking to the brother. So the story that I'm giving is when I came back after posting the pictures, I'm married, my wedding pictures, album and everything. To, to the everyone, brother. Yeah, yeah. He's like, what the fuck? You know, like, I know this can't be true. So what he's saying is, since he wasn't talking to the brother or me, he never even knew that we got together to marry. Yes. Yes. So, uh, wow. I'll tell you, at the end, I'm the one that suffered. What did he I'm say the, after? I'm the one that suffered. Um, you know, finally, I waited two years for him to come. Once he arrived, 
uh, you know, the first month. We started having issues. Well, how I say, he got you here. You and the brother. Yeah, yeah. Um, I said, let me take you to California to visit your brother because they hadn't seen each other in like 20 years or whatever. So me being so nice, not knowing that this would end my, my life, but <laughs> let me take you to California to see your brother because you haven't seen him in 20 years. Now, this is his first week in America. He's only been here one week, never been anywhere else. I said, let me take you to see him. I did that. And me not knowing, friends that have saw me with the brother, you know, long ago, they see me now with this brother. So now they are insulting him. How could you marry her and she been with your brother? They insulting him. So now he feels really, really bad emotionally, mentally, because his knowledge is what he's telling me that he didn't know we had a relationship like that. He thought we was just friends. He didn't know we had ever had any intimacy or he would have never married me. So now a month later, he moved. He moved out only one month. He moved out totally like, no, I cannot be married to you. Yeah. So that is kind of how <laughs> I ended up in this field of things, you know, like, let me see what these apps are. And da -da -da. here we are. Oh, my gosh. Messy boots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's wild. That's yeah. wild. So he left you. Yeah. What about the original brother that did he talk well, to you again? Well, he may have wanted to, but I'll cut off all communication with everything. You know, um, I end up being the one that was hurt in the end, mm -hmm. you know, because my time, my sacrifice, my effort, you know, thinking that I could turn this into something real, you know, and at the end, I was the one that was hurt. You know, um, I had to suffer years after that because of what I've done. You know, ask God for forgiveness to try, you know, to move on my life and, you know, still be the great person that I am, even though I don't look that way. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're just getting here, welcome to Exclusive Interview. We are currently interviewing Green Eyed Goddess. So, Green Eyed Goddess, let's take it back. We're going to see why. Green Eye Goddess felt the way she felt and wanted to make that decision. Tell us who Green Eye Goddess is. Yes. So I am Green Eye Goddess. The reason that I gave myself the name Green Eye Goddess is because, yes, um, I'm African American. I'm not mixed with anything. Um, I think in my ancestors, maybe we have, you know, an Indian, uh, you know, background. And so that's possibly how I got the green eyes. Um, it's only like one in every generation that has color eyes in my family. Me being somewhat the oldest, everyone else, you know, following every 10 years, someone would get the green eyes or color eyes in our family. And so um, the goddess is because it's kind of like the way that I live my life. Um, God is always the head, you know. And I feel that the reason why I am today is because of him and my faith in him. And so I consider myself to be a goddess. Um, I live my way, always trying to grow, develop, and improve in anything that I do. I'm very supportive. I always want to see other people win. No negativity. You know, I try to avoid drama, things like that. And, you know, just try to help everybody to win in some way. If it's just a word of encouragement, if it's, you know, motivation, if it's praying for somebody, I've prayed for somebody right here live on stream, you know, because they was down. And so I was like, you know what, let's just go into prayer, you know, and sometimes that's needed, you know. Um, someone came on my stream yesterday, like, I'm so depressed. And I was like, no, you ain't. And, you know, we, we changed that by before they left my stream. They was like, oh, my God, I feel so much better. I was like, yeah, I know, because I'm going to give you that. I'm going to give you all that I have in me so that I know you are great. Yes, um, I'm originally from Chicago. I left Chicago when I was uh, after high school, around 20. Um, I moved to Utah. I lived there roughly 20 years. And, and now I'm here. Uh, making a new life for myself and my family here in Texas. Period. Yes. So let's take it back. You said you was originally, were you born and raised in Chicago? Yes. Okay. So tell us about the household. Uh, did you have both parents? How many siblings you had? Everything. 
Okay, so um, both of my parents are still living. Um, I have my father has maybe six children from another relationship. My mom has two, myself and my brother. Um, yes, I'm divorced. <laughs> my mom, my brother, my mom has two, me and my brother. We are roughly like 13 years apart. And so um, my mom was told that she would never be able to conceive uh, after giving birth to my brother. Um, you know, she felt lonely and emptiness. So, you know, she kept hope alive and she continued to pray and pray and pray. And then one day God blessed her with a baby girl. And so that's me, the goddess. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, just me and my brother, we wasn't really raised together because, you know, his father, you know, was, I don't even know how to describe him, but you know, he was like that. He wanted to raise his son when my mother and him decided to divorce. So me and my brother wasn't raised together, but yes, my mom remarried. My mom has always been married my whole life. Three different husbands, but my mom has been married my whole life. Wow. And so I've always been in a uh, two two parent home for the most part. Um, I have two children. Uh, I'll say my first son. It's kind of like trial and error because I was a teen parent, but now my second. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my second is amazing. Um, they've both all been very, very blessed to like take international studies. My oldest son speaks Turkish fluent. My youngest son speaks Japanese fluent. And so, you know, I've been blessed to have, you know, great kids. And uh, it wasn't always easy. The first one, I was a single parent. The second one, you know, his father's always been here to be supportive. And so, you know, just doing the best that I could. Um, Raising a, you know, somewhat of a single mom for the beginning part. Got you. Yes. Um, how old are your kids? Right uh, the oldest, my oldest son is 26. Well, he just turned 27. And my youngest is 15. Got you. Okay, so let's bring it back. So yes. in your household, I know you mentioned your dad had four kids, is it? About six or seven or eight. Six, seven or eight. Okay. <laughs> Did you grow up with your dad? Was your dad in a household as a when, when you was a kid? Um, not my biological father because you know he wanted to play the fields. My mom did have a husband that was there to raise me, but my biological father was making babies. You know, as some gotcha. cuties, some cutie red bones do. You know. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, what was the dynamics in your in your home with your your mom, her husband? Yes. Okay. As yes. well as you and your, your your sibling. Oh wait, you said you're thirteen years apart. Yeah. So he wasn't. He but didn't he's grow older up in the than same you. Home. Yes. Yes. And yeah, I didn't grow up in the same home. Right. Right. Got you. Got you. Yeah. Got you. So your brother pretty much lived with your his dad. Yes. Yes. Okay. And so you pretty much was the only kid at home. Yes. Sounds like. All right, so tell me how that was for you, like being the only kid, you having brothers and siblings elsewhere, but you being the only kid. Well, I'll say it's good and bad. Uh, the good side is, you know, you always can get what you want because you're the only child. So everybody always, you know, favoring you, supporting you, giving you everything because you're the only child. But the bad right. side of that is... Um, you kind of grow alone and throughout life you become somewhat of a loner because you don't have that bond of having sisters and brothers and, you know, you know, close people in a home every day, you know, to fight with, to argue with over the, the bathroom or, you know, to do things like that. Like mm -hmm. I've never, you know, had to experience those things because I was somewhat of an only child growing up. Got you. Yes. How did that make you feel? Um, well, I mean, so everyone always say I'm spoiled. So I love it. I mean, <laughs> I can say that it could be bad in my relationships to a certain extent because I always feel like whatever I want, I should get. Or, you know, when I'm, whatever I want, I'm, I'm going to get And if you it. don't, you going to take their brother. No, no. <laughs> no, no, no. No way. I ain't doing that no more. No. <laughs> no. Um... <laughs> I don't know, but 
now in my adult life, I, I feel lonely. I, I, I kind of feel lonely. I mean, I can like communicate with my siblings, but it's mostly social media. You know, we'll message each other, we'll tag each other, but we don't have a personal relationship where if I'm having a bad day, I can call my sister. Or if I'm having a bad day, you know, I can just like text my brother. Uh, I, can I say this? Like, I haven't talked to my brother in more than a year, my biological brother. Mm. And it's because of, you know, the way that I feel that he's been supportive to our family. So I'm at a stage now that I would rather separate myself from people that I feel are not good people or have betrayed me somewhat in a way. Right. So now I'm kind of lonely. You know, I'm kind of lonely. I don't have uh, my family so close. No one lives here. And why do you feel like your brother betrayed you? Well, because he's he should be the head. You know, what I've been taught is that the man, you know, are providers, protectors. And, you know, he hasn't shown that. You know, he hasn't shown that as a brother to be here for myself or my mother, you know. Uh, never got a birthday gift. Never got a Christmas gift. You know, he's not like a giver. And me, I'm I'm a big giver, you know? So to see like my brother, something from me is not the same, which I know he can never be, but come on now, your mom, your sister, you need to be making sure that we have everything, right. you know? Um, and at what age was parents. this? Is this something you feeling now or was this yes. something you felt? In okay. adult life now. So like- Does he I, have a family? Well, he's been through some struggles. He had a wife for 20 years. Um, they went through a divorce. Um, kids? He had, Any kids? Oh, yes. One of them is very famous. A lot of people know her. She's my niece, Zaria Troy. She's a, like, prophetess all over the social media sites. But her name is Zaria Troy, and she's so powerful. But once again, our communications isn't there. It's like our family is somewhat broken. She's my only niece, and she has a brother, my only nephew, and the only one that I really communicate with is the nephew. And he's part of the alternative lifestyle. But I love him so much. He loves me so much. He calls me. He checks on me. You know, I support him. And, you know, I'm here for him, whatever. But the niece, we probably haven't talked in three or four years. Well, I'm always on her social media, you know, giving her, you know, encouragement. You can do this. Keep winning. But behind the scene, people don't know. Like, how can someone like her be so powerful, but she don't even communicate with her family, like father, mother, aunts, uncles, you know? And I have to realize sometimes God have to separate you for a reason. You don't always understand. You don't always mm -hmm. understand. Yeah. So sometimes it just makes me feel lonely not, you know, having that close-knit relationship with my brother. Okay. Yeah. So, so let's bring it. And, and we want all the pieces to connect. And and I, I kind of feel you on like what you what you said about your niece, but I want to be honest with you. I'm that person. Sometimes life be lifing, you know what I'm saying? And it's like when you get in your zone and sometimes family could like well, you down? you out of your zone. Yes. And, yeah. Yes. So sometimes, like you said, and I'm glad you realized that you you do gotta kind of separate yourself, but that don't mean it can't you can't change that. Like I get complaints like that all the time. Like X down is in the box, she'll tell you. <laughs> like my sisters and I made them all download the app. I said, listen, y'all worried about me, y'all miss me, y'all want to speak to me. Download the freaking app. This is where I'm always at. You will always find me here. And now they're all on the app. <laughs> wow. <laughs> But, see, but this is wrong. not the first time she logged in and signed up for the app, you know? But this is the first time I actually see her trying to, like, take it a little bit serious. That's because she met me and she fell in love. So she was like, oh, I want more Donna in my life. Has she been <laughs> met you? <laughs> <laughs> no, not like that. more time. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I have a question. I typically hold it to the end, but um, I, I just need to know. So... I listened to the way you explain um, the needs and requirements that you have of your brother. And I was trying to figure out 
what is the reason that you are expecting that much from him? I, I can understand you wanting him to be there for your mom and expecting him to show up. But it seems like you wanted him to provide that energy to you and your mom. So can you explain why? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I think I <laughs> so, know why. But so um, something I haven't shared with you is uh, when I was in Utah, um, I was living that lifestyle, you know, the fast drug lifestyle, you know, and I was somewhat what they would call somewhat of a street boss. So during my time there, I was pushing a lot of money to my family, supporting them because everybody knew who I was and what I was doing. So everybody was always there asking me, you know, do this. Oh, can you help me pay this bill? Can you do these things for me? And because the big person I am, you know, I'm a giver. So I would give and give and give with no expectations. Why? Because it was easy. I didn't, you know, suffer any blood, sweat, or tears to get this money. So, you know, if I could help somebody, I was more than happy to help someone. Um, I gave my brother a car. Uh, one day, you know, I, I took a drive to Chicago from Utah and the car, uh, the, the air, something happened with the air and the car stopped. So I told my brother, if you come get this car, you can have it. You know, you can have it. And he was like, no, I'm just going to help you. You're my little sister. You know, I'm not going to take your car. I was like, I'm not tripping. I'll just go get another one, you know? And so I actually gave him the car and, you know, he fixed it and tried to bring it to me. But when he brought me the car, I actually had signed the title and just passed it to him. And so I didn't, like I said, I didn't do it with any expectations. I just felt like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm able, let me give my brother a car. And so nothing was said. I, I went, you know, went back about my life and, you know, uh, my birthday came, I think it was my 25th birthday. And my brother had a brand new Jack and I, and I asked him, you know, he's a funeral director, so he's professional too. Um, I said, let me use your car. You know, it's my birthday and, you know, I want to show out. So he's like, okay, okay, okay. Then a day come and I call him and I ask him for the car. And he's giving me all these excuses. You're not on insurance. I, I, I was blown away. Like I just gave you a car like a couple years ago. Now you telling me I can't even use it for my birthday. He came with all these mm -hmm. excuses. So, you know, that one bought a little bad blood, you know, but you ask, why do I have these expectations? Because I feel like I've always been there for you. When will you ever return a favor? He would run into situations. You know how sometimes brothers, you know, kind of think immaturely and run into situations where he need a little, you know, to stretch until this time or to stretch until that time. And I'm always there, always, never denying, never denying. And so I wonder when will you ever reciprocate the same love that you receive? When will you ever, like throughout my entire life, I can't remember him ever taking me to dinner, ever doing anything that I can appreciate and love and say, oh, my brother did this for me or with me, you know? So it becomes draining when you have someone and it could be your brother, your mother, or any family member, but all they are is takers, 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 and they never can give. Not encouragement, not wisdom, not gifts, not nothing. But let me ask you this. You said takers, 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 takers. Are you, is he always asking you for things? Yes. I'm one of the ones he called in his times of need. I'm one of the ones he called. Can you cash out me a 20? Can you cash out me a 50? I get paid Friday. I need gas. I just, you know, and so that's what I mean. Like I'm giving, giving, giving. And when you return, you just return exactly that. <laughs> not a bonus, not a, this my little sister, not even a call to say, are you So okay? when he's in need, he calls you. And how often would you say he calls you? When I was available, maybe once a month, every other month, you know. And what are some of the things he would ask you for? All he want to talk about is girls. That was another reason I cut him off. You know, because I get tired of talking about girls, girls, my friends. Ooh, who is this girl? Who is that girl? I just had to cut him off. But, I mean, he would ask not only me, my mom, too. You know, mom is never going to say no. But he would ask me and mom. We was always there for him. All right. And Donna, you say, why am I saying that I deserve the same thing my mom? Because I feel like at that time, um, I was taking care of my mom. 
So as a man, as a brother, you're supposed to make sure that we good in the house. Mom, okay? You okay? Y'all need anything? You know, because you like the head of our family. So, it's all the same. Here's how I feel. Okay. I feel like you want your brother to play that daddy figure. And you got to understand he's a kid too. So he's exactly. looking he's looking for the same mm -hmm. love that you looking for. You echo and babe, can you go on Sorry. mute? Thank you. <laughs> so the the love you're looking for from him is what your dad should have been giving you. Not necessarily what he should have been given. You know what I'm saying? I know you want him to step up and play that role, but now he has a whole family that he's in that role do playing. You know what I'm saying? So that's what yeah. makes it a little, and I get what you're saying. Trust, mm -hmm. trust and believe that. There are some things that you're saying that like, I feel the same way. Like when it comes to my family, I give you a perfect example, right? Every year, like every year for Christmas, I've always, always, reached out to my nephews. I bought them gifts and stuff like that. I bought them speakers and not cheap gifts. I bought them the Beats Bluetooth headphones. I bought them some AirPods. I gave them phones, everything. My brother don't never have nothing to give me. <laughs> <laughs> one time, one time when they all got the cell phones and stuff like that. And I also gave them like some Beats or whatever. But like I said, every year I'll call them, and whether it's sport things, whether it's stuff, uh, one of them is a content creator. He does what I do, but he does it on, um, he does it on another app that's like Twitch. Okay. Or whatever that they, that they do or whatever. Anyway, long story short, um, he, he was like, he was like, he looked at a chair because I had it in my Amazon cart and he was like. Yo, he was like, I appreciate what you do for the kids and you always do it for the kids every year. And then he brought me a gaming chair. Not this gaming chair, a gaming chair I had because this was years ago. My mm -hmm. very first gaming chair, he brought me that gaming chair. That's the only thing he's he's done for me, okay? But regardless of the fact, when, he, when I'm doing these things, I'm doing it because I want to do these things. Yeah. I want to let the kids know that I support them. I love them and stuff like that. It's not necessarily me doing it for him. But sometimes it makes me wonder in my head, like, you know, you can step up and do a little bit more. But, and at the same time, I don't want him to. Sometimes people are in different positions, right? And yeah. he was the older brother for a long time playing that daddy role. So in my mind, my expectations could be for him to step up and do a little bit more for me. But at the same time, I know at one point when I needed him to do more for me, he wasn't there. You know, I'm not saying he never helped me or did anything because he did help me at one, one point of my life. One right. point of my life, I wanted to buy a vehicle. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is in 2009, I want to say. I wanted to buy a vehicle, right? And when I wanted to buy this vehicle, um... I, I was short and I didn't want to finance. I hated financing. I always wanted to save my money by that vehicle. And I saved up $5,000. Boom. And that's me being young, saving up $5,000. That kind of felt good. That ain't easy, yeah. But the car that I wanted was seven grand. And I'm like, dang, I might have to finance and I don't want to finance. And I told him about it. And he was like, I'll give you the 2000 And here's one of the things I love about my brother. He said, I'll give you the 2000 Keep a 1000 That's for your birthday. The other 1000 I want it back. But you don't have to start paying me back right now. You can start paying me on such and such date. Wow. So I did like the financing of the 1000 Although yeah. he gave me 2000 I did the financing of a 1000 Okay? My dad already told me if I got a car, just the one time I asked him for something, he said, if you got a car, then I will let you be on my insurance. Wasn't even his insurance, I found out. It was my mother's insurance, my stepmother's <laughs> insurance. But nonetheless, his name is on it too, so he yes. put me on his insurance. So I was good to go, okay? Mm -hmm. Had my car, did, did good, was paying my insurance, was paying his insurance too, 
because I'm like, it was so cheap. I was like, yeah, I'll pay yours too, you know? <laughs> yeah. And I was parked at a red light, boom, somebody hit my car. Uh, at, at that same time, they was laying off a lot of people. I was working, mm -hmm. I was working for, um, I was working for Creedmoor, okay? The crazies, you know what I'm saying? For years, I was a counselor for uh, Creedmoor and stuff. And they laid, they laid us off and stuff. So I had no income coming in, okay? And now my dad, like, I had somebody hit my car from the back. You know, when you stop, somebody hit your car from the back, they're automatically in the wrong. Right. That was right. a nice piece of change I was supposed to get. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. And yeah. it was like, um, it was a check for like four grand. Now, honestly, I only needed, you know, from when you're from New York, you only need about a thousand dollars to kind of fix, fix car. the car. <laughs> you know, so I'm like, all right, boom, three grand, give my brother his part of the money, boom. My father stole my money. Yes, he did. Avoided me for months. Okay, oh. till I had to call him from a Florida number. He finally answered, and he told me he sent my money to Haiti. All right? On the other hand, my brother that I have to pay this $1,000 to, before the time was even uh, 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 approached yet, he, like, sent the message out like he was tired of the family. Oh, wow. And he attached me to that message. And he was like, oh, you know, like, oh, don't ask him for nothing and stuff like that and stuff. Because my father used to ask him a lot. So I'm like, Dan, it's the one time you did something for me. Right. And then I'm being included in this message. That's and in funny. my mind, I said, I will never ask him for a thing again. You know? And then, um, and, and that's how I, I think, because I would never do that to someone. If you ever need me, I'm, and you'll never hear a word from me, I'll never question, you know what I'm saying? You're that's right. how I am. So right. when I seen that, that like left me stunned, like, you know, so he felt like and, and through his life and just like as well as me, but he wouldn't know that because when he graduated, he's four years, four and a half years older than me. Okay. He lived a different life from what I lived when he yes. left. I got kicked out. You know what I'm saying? When he because he left at the age of 17, went to the military. So we when when during the time when he left, we lived a completely different life from what he used to know. So he's just think everybody's out to use him, but that wasn't my story. Was yes. people using him? Yes. yes. But, and then, but so when he attached me to that and then what he had to see, right. And it took him years to see this. What he had to see is that shit. I misjudged you, bro. And he literally had to say that to me. He was one of those people that wanted me to do things his way and thought I should be happy doing things his way because that's how he was successful. How you're successful is not how I'm going to be successful. Right. You understand what I'm saying? And yeah. that's one of the things I had to teach him because he's like, oh, you can do work this job. I said, no, I don't want to work this job. I'm happy working this job. It don't pay me much, but I'm happy with this job. You know yeah. what I'm saying? This is my route. This is what I want to do. I'm not right. going to work a job that makes me unhappy. I'm going to work. And then he would see me do things and think that I won't be able to afford it and then watch me be able to afford it. And he's like, well, how are you able to afford it? And I'm like, I save my money. You think I'm out partying every day, but I budget for partying every day. Yeah. Okay, but I still save my money. Save my I money. still put in OT. You don't know what I'm doing when yes. I'm not with you. You understand? Yes. And okay. after a few years, and then of course, also after years of him seeing me from that time, I never gave up on his kids. I've always been there, you know, always showed them love. I call them all the time. And then that's when he started to realize, like, damn, every year she blesses my kids. She takes care of them. She, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And he, he had to see that, you know? Yeah. And that's what, what made him change his. Now we have the dynamics. Like, if I needed something, I know I can ask him, but I would never. Yeah. yeah. Because I still have those memories from when I was back. younger. Oh and, yeah, you know, mm. and vice versa. And as a matter of fact, one time I did. I sent him the money. Ex, ex Donna, she even knows. I sent them. I was like, here, and I sent them over the amount. And he was like, we was planning a trip, so he's like, yo, I'm just gonna take five hundred from it. And he wound up sending me the money right back. And I was like, well, I, why'd you send me the money back? Like, you know, because I wanted to pay him back. You know, from what happened years ago. PTSD yeah. from borrowing. Right, right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But yes. he sent me the money back. You know? That's, so yeah. I, I do get you in that sense.
but it's m more so. And to me, I felt like I wanted my brother to play that dad role to me because my dad wasn't really a dad. Yeah. And you, you know, know my right. brother may, was more of a dad right. growing up for me than my dad was. You may be right because, you know, my, my father, he would come around, but he was like the money back. He only came around to give money. You know, uh, I would probably see him a couple times, two or three times a month throughout my entire life. But he was always just, you know, this type of man. No time. You know, we didn't do things like go to the movies and, you know, do things yeah. like that. So you may be right. Maybe I was, you know, feeling like he should fill that void. I mean, I did have a stepfather, but, you know, it, it's kind of different. You know, it's kind of yeah. different when it's not your biological father. So... Yeah. Yeah. It, it definitely is, and I, I could totally understand that. Yeah. So, so let's bring it. Let's bring it back. All right. Okay. So, how was it for you going to school? Yeah. Like as far as you could remember, kindergarten, first grade. Um. How was it? How was your your mother's finances and stuff when you was going to school and stuff? So my mom. My mom was very very hardworking. Thank she you she worked in healthcare. So. She worked a lot of hours. She, you know, um, I don't know. She would leave, uh, you know, people to babysit uh, me. Um, I felt like I was abused uh, as a child, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, you know, in all different ways. Um, but as I became an adult, I was able to, you know, heal from those wounds. Um, let's say my elementary school was kind of good. I went to school with a cousin of mine, an older cousin, which to this day, I've had to detach myself from them too. But <laughs> I went to school, you know, she was always like a big sister. You know, we lived together for a little while. And um, I don't know, that was another relationship where I would do a lot of giving, 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 and never received, you know? So I, like I said, once I became an adult, I decided that certain people, I don't want to take with me where I'm going because they've always been takers. You know, you feel like you give so much respect and love to people and they don't give it back. Um, I was even forced to fight different occasions. You know, she was in a gang, you know, she was, you know, they have a lot of gangs yeah. in Chicago. And when so, you say she, who are referring to? My cousin that Your I cousin. went to okay. school with. Yeah, elementary. We're talking about elementary school. And I kind of looked at her like a big sister because we went to school together. We rode the bus together, you know, things like that. But she was in a gang. And, you know, uh, she forced me to have my first fight. <laughs> I wasn't really, you know, probably like third or fourth grade. I wasn't right. really into that probably fighting and stuff. But... Uh, it was a girl, you know, I think we had got into it and a girl wanted to fight me. So my cousin threatened me, like, if you don't beat her ass, I'm going to beat your ass. <laughs> I was like, what? So I don't know. It's my first fight. So I took my shoe off and just started beating the girl in the head. And I ended up getting suspended, of course, you know, because my cousin forced me to fight this girl. And I didn't want to get beat up from her because she was a big girl. So I was just like, no, um, that was my first fight. Throughout school, you know, I was in the choir, I was athletic, swim team, you know, things like that. Um, I wasn't never Did really you with... have everything you needed, like as as far as finances, as far as like you watching the other kids and stuff like that, like did you get whatever you wanted? Um, yes and no. Okay. Yes Explain and no. Explain the yes. Yes, because like I said, me being the mm. only child. Uh, it wasn't really hard to, you know, keep me happy versus someone that had right. five. So even times that my mom couldn't, she would find a way. Call a grandmother, call a father, you know, call someone. And uh, pretty much I had what I want. Uh, we did grow up on the south side of Chicago. So I'm not going to say everything was sugar. <laughs> you know, we was in a Inglewood, the ghetto. You know, um, we had times that we lived with family members, you know. Um, times was hard. So my mom, you know, when maybe her and her husband was having a down period, we would go to a family member, you know? Gotcha. Yeah, we would go to a family member. And, you know, uh, I had, so I'll tell you, I was blessed. We had neighbors next door. 
once again, they were like, you know, the, the hype girls, the drug dealer girls, you know, and so, I don't know, they saw something in me at a young age, and they will always give me all of the used, damage, whatever the designer was at the time, you know? So I stay fresh, I stay fresh, not because, you know, my mom was spending thousands and hundreds of thousands of dollars, but because of the people next door that was into these lifestyles. They, you know, they love right, me. Right, right. Yeah, they love me. So, you know, sometime throughout my younger years, you know, large families, we would share clothes and, you know, things like that. But Same. I was able to get out of that environment. And I thank God for that. <laughs> yeah, at a young age. I was like 18 or 19 after high school. And that's when I moved away from that. So, but yeah, Chicago is very difficult. So let's, let's go to your first, okay? How old were you when you had your first relationship? I could be kidding <laughs> Probably seven. No, <laughs> now you popping that thing at the age of seven. No, you know how in church you have your church boyfriend. All right, tell church, us about I, that. I had a church boyfriend, so we probably was kissing and stuff, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, so tell us what went down. Who asked who out? We want we want the details. Uh. I don't know. We just probably liked each other. He was the drama. You know, I grew up in church from birth. You know, I told you my mom prayed for me to get mm -hmm. here. So that same religion I was born in throughout my whole life. Um, so, you know, growing up in the church, everybody knows you. And I don't know if we probably did it that way. It was probably like word of mouth during that young years. Like, oh, she like you or he like mm -hmm. you, you know, and y'all call y'all self going together or <laughs> whatever. But we didn't, you know, cross an intimacy. But, you know, as far as like kissing and things like that. Um, ah, intimate uh, relationship. I would have to say probably around 13, 14. Um, the little boys in the neighborhood, you know, we would play games like catch a girl, freak a girl, play house, <laughs> play house. <laughs> you know? Not catch a girl, freak a girl. <laughs> That is oh, cracking man. up back then. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all ever heard about that game? <laughs> Donna, let's play Catch a Girl, Freak a Girl, so I can freak your ass. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Look, she like, like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so boom. What happened during Catch a Girl, Freak a Girl? <laughs> oh, man. You know, we, we play house. You the mama, I'm the daddy. These are kids, you know. We under the bed, we uh, behind the house, on the side, you know, all of this weird stuff teenagers do, you know? And so, yeah, that was kind of like my experience breaking in, you know, um, real relationship. I would say my first like relationship where we, thank you so much, where we agreed that, okay, we in a relationship was probably around 15. Uh, the guy was my neighbor a couple doors down and, you know, we started dating. We even got caught. His mom came in. Yeah. His mom came in and we was in the bed. <laughs> yeah. At 15. So, oh my God, that was just one of the worst. And what did she say to you? Yeah. I hurried up and get out of my house and went down there and told my parents, you know, yeah, it was ugly. It was ugly. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Shoot. What did your parents say? Oh, yeah. Um, I didn't get a whooping, but I was on punishment for a long time. I couldn't go outside probably for months. I was just stuck in the house. But it wasn't really like no major discipline or, you know, too was much. Was it worth it? Was no. It worth it no 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 because then you know the word starts spreading off to the neighborhood like no no you know how boys talk he felt right. so proud now you know what i'm saying start spreading through the neighborhood it's kind of embarrassing you know but yeah it's a learning experience got you so so now let's let's move forward when you got to let's let's go back to junior high school Okay. In junior high school, was there anything significant that you remember that happened? Um, 
So the way that the school system is set up is kindergarten through eighth grade. And okay. then from eighth grade, you go to high school. So uh, are you speaking? Um, we kind of touched on elementary. So are you ready to move to high school? Or? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go to high school. <laughs> okay. Because, yeah, the school system is just a little different. Um, high school. Well, I wasn't really the end girl. I mean, I was cute or whatever, but I wasn't the really the end girl, you know, because... Most of those girls on the chili the team or they was on the pom pom team or they was doing hair because the school I went to was one of those um, curriculums where you would pick your major. So you got the cosmetology got you. girls, you got people in different, you know, areas. So it seems that, you know, I didn't really fit in. I wasn't like the fit in type, but I kind of found my own niche. Um, I like photography, so I would go to uh, the too. journalism the journalism uh, teacher. And, you know, he liked me too. He would just give me the camera with five or six rows, allow me to go to all the functions, mm -hmm. whether it's basketball, football. So that is kind of how I got known through my years of high school was from being at all of the athletic activities and being a camera girl. So everybody respected me. They like, oh, that's the camera girl, that's the camera girl. You know, so that's kind of how I got known. Um, I wasn't, you know, like I said, one of the most popular or anything like that. Um, I did go to a popular high school, Simeon Vocational High School, which is a very well-known high school in Chicago. So, um, you know, it's a good school, but I just wasn't the most popular girl. Mm -hmm. I did enjoy, um, I got pregnant my sophomore year. And so that was another thing that changed things for me. Um, I had homeschool during that time, you know, during that time, the teachers would come to your house to keep you up to par until you are able to come back. So after that, I went back to school. But I kind of had a setback. Um, I was demoted because of, you know, going through the pregnancy, missing school, missing classes, not keeping up to where I should be. And so, yeah. Wait a was... minute. Hold up now. Black space. Yes. I... You got pregnant while you was in high school. Yes. Tell us about that. Okay. <laughs> so... Um, me and my mom moved to this area in Chicago that was like really bad, but it was what she could afford at the time. So, um, this was a time that she wanted to kind of separate from her husband because, you know, he was struggling with life, you know, having some issues, getting involved into, you know, negative things and drugs and things. So she wanted to separate me and her from that. So we moved to an area that, you know, wasn't so great. Um, I wasn't really used to this because we was kind of living in a nice house with my father, you know, with her husband, but now we mm -hmm. moved to the hood, <laughs> you know? So I started to be free, uh, go out, hang out with the people. And this was a very high crime area. You know, these, where we were living was one gang. The next block was another gang. So they would do drive-bys daily, weekly, you know, it was kind of bad. But, you know, I grew up in that environment. And one of the guys on the block, because that's what they call it, the block. <laughs> one of the guys on the block, you know, was flirting and flirting and flirting. So we started to date. I end up pregnant. I tell him I'm pregnant. He tells me, no, I'm not ready for no kids. Get rid of it. So at that time, my mom's husband was, uh, you know, into law enforcement. So I had insurance, good insurance. I was like, okay, let me just, you know, and keep it mom only 15. So I can't call myself, but I wrote out a whole letter detailing what the person should say to be able to get this appointment done for me as if it was like, you know, my mom or someone. Well, I'm such an idiot. I dropped the paper. I lost the paper before I could get it to the person. Yeah. <laughs> and one of my cousins who was doing like janitorial service, she found it. Oh, gosh. Yeah. So she went to tell my mom, like, you know, your daughter pregnant. You know, your daughter pregnant. But my mom believed me. I wasn't showing, you know, I was still new within the first month or two. So my mom believed me. I was like, mom, she don't know what she's talking about. She's lying. You know what I'm saying? Da, 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 da. So my mom believed me. 
I never was able to get it done. And yeah, that is how I became a single parent because he said he wasn't ready. He's one of the hood boys. Here I am. So you Here never wind up getting it done. And what no. did your mom say and do? So once four found, months. Once you legit found out. So four months when you could get the photo, five, four or five months when you get the uh, photo. I have been wearing big clothes because we live in the same house. Maybe she just wasn't that into me. I don't know. But, you know, I hid it for four to five months. <laughs> I hid it for four to five months. So finally, when I got the ultrasound picture, I came home and I and I just gave it to her. I just passed it to her. I didn't have anything to say. I just passed it to her. And she's like, what is this? This looks like a baby. <laughs> Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. She like this look like a baby. I was like, yeah, you're gonna be a grandma. <laughs> and you were what age at this point? Fifteen. Fifteen. And what did she say? <sighs> she was happy and sad. You know, she was happy because, you know, it's her first grandchild. But she was sad because my age, you know. And so she knew the guy that I was dating at the time. So she wasn't too happy about that, you know, like, <sighs> you know, but she's very supportive, very, very supportive. You know, the process of finding out wasn't so great, but right. when the baby came, she was my number one supporter. That's like, so nice. I didn't even have to wake up in the morning. She'd take him to the daycare every morning for like a whole year. Like she was very supportive. So Did I was blessed. School? No. Not at that time. Later, yes. Okay. But because when they demoted me, my pride, my pride was in a way I was embarrassed. I did not want to go back and be a junior when this was my senior year, you know? Yeah. And everybody had gave me the respect. Like, I was supposed to graduate with my class, you know, and now I'm be with these little ones, you know? And I don't know. It was a pride thing. It was a pride thing. So I didn't finish at that time. But when I went to Utah, yeah, I did finish. But it was just like, yeah, it was so bad, you know? It was so bad. And when you went to Utah, did your mom move to Utah as well? Yes, that's how we got there. So my aunt worked for the airlines, and they relocate you sometimes. And so she, you know, at that time, they wanted her to take a position in Utah. And so um, I had just had a my son. So my mom is like, well, my auntie is like, we need to get her out of Chicago because I don't want to lose my niece, you know, to the streets so y'all yeah, moved to utah and i was like no way i'm not going to know utah so i tried it my mom took my son i was in chicago by myself for a couple months and i tried it you know i tried it i think i was 18 i tried to make life by myself but i was just running into roadblock after roadblock i moved with this person it's a problem something happened i moved this problem. so i was just like oh, god the thing that made me leave was because i was dating a guy and one day he put me down, like it hurt it. It hurt me so bad. He was like, you gonna stay here in Chicago with these nothing ass bitches, you ain't gonna be shit. All y'all do is walk up and down the street, chasing this nigga, you know, like the greatest you made you feel so low. And so that's what made me leave. I was like, you know what? I do want better for myself. And I left and I went to Utah. And I was there for like 20 years. So, you know, at first I thought like, I can't Was do it better? This. Yes. Yes. First, it was a culture shock because, you know, coming from that environment to this new environment. So right. every month, every month I was flying home, flying home every month. You know, my aunt worked for the airline, so it was nothing. Every month I'm flying, flying home. But I was spending so much money, thousands of dollars. You got to rent a car. You got to get a hotel, you know. And so I started realizing not only that, people know who you are and what you're doing. So they want you to sponsor bottles, sponsor the party, you know. And, and it just became a toll that every month I'm spending like two, three thousand dollars just to party. So finally, I was like, you know what? Let me just save my money. Let me just save my money, you know. And then I ran into a bad situation that really somewhat changed my life. Um, that mentality to save, 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 save. Yeah. Uh, landed me under investigation for tax evasion. Mm. Yeah, the feds, the FBI, the DEA, everybody raided my house. Everybody right in my house, me alone. So, could you imagine little old me? <laughs> like, you see me now. 
they all they all came for me, you know. And and when they found everything, drugs, guns, money, they didn't take me. So you know, the streets like, oh no, she talking, she snitching. You know, that's what the streets would think. I didn't even know why. Like, why didn't they take me? The warrant was in my name. They found the drugs. They found the guns. They found the money. Why they didn't take me? Was it yours though? Yes. The reason was they wasn't there for that. They was there for tax evasion. So the warrant was set up so that they could get the bank statements and, you know, things about me to see how I was putting all this money into the bank with no recollection of how I was getting it. So when they mm. when they did what they did for me right in my house, they went to another family member house two weeks later. And that is when they told him, tell her we know everything. We know where she at. We know because I left the next day, got on a flight. They told me, told him, my cousin, we know where she at. We know everything. Da, 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 da. And he's the one that somewhat caught the rap because he went to jail for five years from them going into his house. I was able to get away. I don't know. That's why I said it has to be God giving me a second chance of life because he, you know, that's that's a pretty big charge. I was facing 30 years, you know, and, you know, after that, that was what changed my life. I know, um, like, I PDA said they can only arrest you for what's covered in the warrant. Yeah. Well, you probably know a little bit more than me, love. But, yeah, so I was blessed. Like, I didn't go. And so I felt like that was God saving me to give me a second chance in life. Um, I had spent part of my life as a paramedic, you know, I was professional, but then somehow we slide sometimes through the cracks, you know? Yeah. So I feel like he had something different for me in my life. And that was just a second chance. After that, I, I didn't look back. I gave a lifestyle up and, you know, have a new life. Got you. Got you. Got yeah. you. Got you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to exclusive interview right now we are interviewing green-eyed goddess okay so um if, on both sides if y'all listening in that's who we're interviewing green-eyed goddess uh don't be afraid to come over and hit her with a favorite on the pof side yeah whatever the warrant is what they can do about nothing else. all right so so let's let's bring it so now you have your child you moved okay you avoided life situations it made you want to better yourself, and you did that. How else did you better yourself? Um. Well, after the marriage fell and, you know, things like that, um, I just decided that I wanted to... How old was your son when you got into this marriage? Um. Well, my oldest, I believe, was probably like 17 or 18. He's 27 now, so... How many kids like... do you have now? I have two, two. How old were you when you got your second child? Uh, 30, like somewhere around 30. Uh, okay, so tell us now. about, let's go into that. Let's go into uh, the relationship you had and how he was, your, your second child was conceived. Oh, God, why do you go so deep? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Girl, what we gonna do with you, bro? Yes, um, let's go. This is your autobiography. Uh, so We gotta I get was, deep. I was engaged. I was engaged to a truck driver. He was young, had his own business. This had a truck like driver five, for me. Yeah. Well, he well, like, well, wish. <laughs> he had, he had like five you. or six trucks. You know, I was only, I think, like 19. He was like 21, 22. But his father, mm -hmm. uh, you know, gave him a trucking company. Mm -hmm. So we decided to engage. And, you know, thank you. Wow. Thank you, thank you, Wish. <laughs> so we decided to engage, you know, um, young, mm. trying to live this long distance relationship. You know, he's a truck driver, traveling all over, you know. So I caught myself traveling a lot, too. Like, I've been to, like, 40 states. And it's because I would follow him wherever he go. I would drive and meet him in these different places, you know. So this time, during a hurricane, one of the hurricanes, um, they needed ice and water. So they would have these truck drivers to all go to a basin in, in yeah. Florida. Yeah, Florida. So um, I was on vacation from my job. He asked me to travel to Florida to see him. So I was okay with that. Babe, the Canada syrup. 
the Canada serum. Okay. okay. I'm sorry about that. Okay, love. So um, I traveled to Florida to meet him for our vacation. Well, when I got there, why you want to know so much? <laughs> when I got there, he had women's shoes, dush, all his women's stuff in his truck. Yeah. So I, I was what? trying to, yeah, my fiance. So I was trying to hold it in. I was trying to hold it in. You understand? Like, no, you want this vacation to be nice. Don't say nothing. You know, just play it cool. So I did that for a little bit, but then I got a phone call and I was talking to somebody on the phone and he started getting mad. Like I was loud, you know, cause we both in the truck or whatever. So he like, you loud. So then I step out the truck to have the phone call. He locked the door. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I called his mom. I was like, I don't know what's wrong with your son. I was like, I stepped out the truck to have a phone call. Now he locked me out. Can you tell your son to open his truck? So the mom had him open the truck. What's going on? Da, da, da. So now he's mad. I'm like, you know what? I'm just finna leave. You know, I, then that's when I brought up about what I found. I found this. I found this. And you trying to tell me that this is real. You know, our relationship. Blah, blah. Yeah. So he like, okay, you can leave. He give me the money to leave. I only been there one day. <laughs> yeah. He give me the money to leave. So because the attitude I have, I'm not, okay, I'm leaving. That's just that. I'm not kissing up and begging and none of that. Okay, right, I'm right. Leaving. So as I'm leaving, so let me explain to you one more time. It's a big Air Force base with like 500 trucks and they dispatched them out that they need, you know, the relief. So there are so many drivers, so many, thousands of drivers waiting to be dispatched out. <laughs> so... As I'm leaving, a truck driver started talking to me. And, you know, I tell him, because he saw me and my fiancé together. So he's like, where your fiancé? I was like, that's over. I'm I'm done, you know? So we exchange numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. Yeah. So we exchange numbers. What? Uh, so, boom, you gave him your number. What happened? So, at this time, he's older, like 17 to 18 years. So, he want to be a sugar dad. So, at that time, only like 24. But he like 40. So, I let, I let him be the sugar daddy. You know, we did the sugar daddy thing for three years. He bought me a car, got me a house, you know. And then, what, four or five years after dating him, I end up pregnant. <laughs> What's that, the machine? <laughs> Guys, I did not fart. Donna was sitting, sitting down and hit the bucket. <laughs> it was not me. Yes. I'm so sorry. She was handing me some butter, y'all, okay? <sighs> <laughs> we said Donna why you cooking with gas <laughs> alright my bad continue I'm so sorry I know so I'm uh, meeting him and he became a sugar daddy he'd be coming to Chicago spoiling me you know tricking all that good stuff and yeah so eventually I gave him his son five years later like yeah the new truck driver. Yes. So when I called a fiance to tell him, oh, he was devastated. I was like, yeah, you know the guy that we met together the day before? <laughs> I was like, you know the guy that we met together? Yeah, that's my new son father. Yeah. He was like, what? Is he in? Is he still around? Oh, no. No, 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 no. But you know, you've been knowing somebody for 20 years or whatever, you know, certain certain. So you knew him for 20 years? Well, I mean, my age now. When I met him, I was only, we was engaged. I was only like 19, so now I'm 43. So, you know, throughout the Got years, you. yeah, we chat here and there, but never nothing serious because, you know, he wasn't the person he should have been. He was having kids on the side and all of this weird stuff. So, you know, I was just like, The sugar like, no. daddy was doing that. No, 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 the fiance, the first truck driver. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. 
<laughs> but so is it the uh, is it the sugar daddy's baby or yes yes so what is he doing now where, where he, is he he's a great father he's a great father like you know he's still on his own trucking company too so he's and a great he still father. takes care of him Yes, 100%. That's what I was asking because you said yes. no originally. Okay. Oh, okay. I thought you meant the first. The first. Sorry. No, no, no. <laughs> so much going on. First, second, third, fourth. <laughs> <laughs> so it sounds to me like when you don't get your way, you have a habit of lashing out and going to the brother or going to another trucker. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> you dig it too deep. Get out! Uh, no. I'm digging too deep. I don't know. Though. I was thinking the same thing. Like, what is it with me and truck drivers? I've dated like four in my life. I was like, am I attracted to them? Like, is it something on me that say she a truck driver girl or what? It was kind of weird for a minute. It so what weird. happened after that? Uh, clearly you guys are not together. You and the, the new truck driver that has your child, right? right. Y'all not together. What What is the relationship now? Um, I would say we are like somewhat becoming of a best friend type of relationship because um, we both married. Like after having my son, I married. Uh, he married somebody, but neither one of them worked. They were both international marriages. He married somebody from Dominica. I married somebody from, you know, Israel, Ethiopia, and neither worked. So, you know, after they failed, we still kind of like co parents so good. You know, we would take right. trips together. Um, you know, we would be, of course, get a double bed, but we would take trips together. For my son, you know, to make sure we go to California, we go to Texas, like anywhere, you know, New York, right. like, and we try to do that. Like my son would go with him uh, every summer. So I would take him during the school year and then he would take him during the summer. And so that's kind of how we've decided to co-parent. Um, we still talk. He call my phone anytime. I call his phone anytime. You know, we're very respectful. I'm in a relationship now. And... Mm -hmm. I don't know if he's in a relationship. It doesn't seem that way. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, we just respect each other's boundaries. Yeah. D was there times where, because your relationship didn't work out, his relationship, that y'all hooked back up? Never. Never? Okay. Never. And you know why? Because, like I said, I believe that if it was, like, if it would have started out as genuine love in the beginning, then right. maybe. But it started out as a sugar daddy relationship. And even after having him, having his son, and when I decided to leave, uh, I think my son was only like three. And mm. he, he asked if he could still be the sugar daddy. And I was like, what? Mm. I was like, are you crazy? I was like, we got a kid together. What the hell do you mean? <laughs> like, you gotta be crazy. You want to take care of this kid. <laughs> yeah. He like, I just want to be, be a, a real part. daddy. Yeah, he like, I just want to always take care of you. Make sure y'all good, you know? And he's like, I don't want my son to suffer because you choose not to have a good life. You know, you know, and when he's saying a good life, like be with him. So the things that he was doing, you know, for me when I was with, with him in a relationship, then he don't want my son to neglect or miss out on anything because I choose not to continue the relationship with him. What about your other child? Did he then become like a dad to your other child? He tried, but my son never accepted him. Um, you know, he came in and he tried. But, you know, sometimes, you know, kids just want their biological parents. And if that person is not around, there is no substitute or there is no replacement. Right. I mean, I guess, it, especially if they're still living, you know. And so he never gave him the respect as his father. Got you. But he always just looked at him as his brother's father. Okay, that's my brother's father. That's my brother's father. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to exclusive interviews with myself and my lovely wife, Donna Cooks. Right now, we are interviewing Green Eyed Goddess. We're coming down to the ending of the interview. So please begin to um, start to um, get your questions together. If you got any questions for Green Eyed Goddess, Hit the plus sign and come in as a guest and you will be able to ask those questions or you can ask them in the comments as well. So, Green Eye, let's take it 
to now. Now we started off the conversation, um, the interview with talking about the now. Yeah. Right. Um, tell us just to um, just to let them know if, for the new people who just came into the room. Let them know what state are you in right now? Like, what are you doing right now with yourself? Um. Well, I just started back streaming about two months ago. Um, I had took a break for a couple months. And reason being is because I felt like uh, I wasn't really being successful anymore on the app. Um, and not just so much diamond count, but... I wasn't like really enjoying my streams as much. I wasn't getting, you know, the views and things like that. So, you know, I just decided that, you know, I'm just going to take a step back, you know, and get out into the real world. And so, um, thank you. <laughs> get into the real world. When I started on the app, I was doing uh, dance workouts every day, consistent, like mm -hmm. for two years straight. I would do like Zumba uh, Afro beats, hip hop, Latin, you know, and those things brought me joy. So not just, you know, losing weight, but, you know, it's a good way to start your day, you know, really being happy and right, right. positive. Yeah. The energy. So I would do that. But then, like I said, you know, the, the drama would come and, you know, the whole situation after playlist, you know, so those different things, you know, it can affect your energy. It can affect your energy. And so I decided to take a step back and, you know, just try to get out in the real world. So, yes, um, it's been seven months now. I'm in a relationship. And, I mean, it's a beautiful thing. It, it's a beautiful thing. Um, like, being on the app, like I said, for two years, I've never dated anyone or really met anyone to, you know, take it to something serious or something personal. So after being here two years and then, you know, finding love again. Did you find it on the app? No, it wasn't on this app. Wow. Okay. Well, how'd you meet? <laughs> it wasn't on this app. No. Tell us how'd you meet. Um, well, we did meet on another platform. <laughs> we didn't, but it wasn't this one. <laughs> It was a different one. And, you know, like, I don't know. It was just something different about him. It wasn't like everybody else that just want to hook up, hook up, hook up. You know, it was, no, not Cinder. <laughs> it wasn't like that. You know, it was like he really wanted to know who I was. He right. wanted to, like, date. You know, and I was kind of curious as to why we waited so long. Like, <laughs> then he was now, like, what, what, no. Describe waiting so long. What do you mean he waited so long? How long y'all was talking? The intimate connection. It was a couple mm. months. And, you know, because everybody else, that's like the forefront. You know, they want to know what it is. Right, he, right. He, he, he didn't. He was so patient. Like, we would go out. He would bring me straight home two, three, four, five times. I'm just like, that's not normal. You know, so it makes you more interested in a person. It makes you more interested in a person. Yeah, you was like, why he ain't trying to throw this ass yeah, in the circle? Yeah, why he trying? looking cute when we go out. You know what I'm saying? I'll be like, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, he's like, I don't want you for that. I don't want you for that, you know? And, yeah, I got to know another side. You know, I got to know another side. Um, There's still good men out here. There's still good men. You know, a lot of us give up. We sit on this app, you know, <laughs> people be in your DMs, and it's all a bunch of talk. You know, right. Um, meet somebody nobody's really ready to commit or have anything serious. But like I said, he was different. And so I'm happy again. I'm happy again. So he was different. How long have you, you guys been talking now? It's been seven months. Thank seven you. Seven months. Yes. Are you in a rush to get married? Not a rush, but yes, that is the goal. No, he's not a truck driver. <laughs> no, he's actually.
actually that's, a professional. He's actually a professional soccer player, so that's what's like totally different, you know? Yeah, he's a professional soccer player, so you know, stepping doing something a little different. A little different. <laughs> yeah. Is he is he is he catering to your needs? Oh yes, he caters. Does and he so, have any brothers? Do we have brothers? Who yeah. wanna know? Get out, bro. Just get out. Just get out. Get out. Get we out. just need to make sure if get things out. go left, you don't I go to his brother. I thought you were talking about for a sister. Get out. Get out. Get out. <laughs> then be like, I want to know. But no, so one thing that I noticed, right, because I, I need to share this too. Yes, mm -hmm. I'm African-American. Um, The guy I'm dating is African. Also, the previous experience that I told you was that too. One reason why I've decided to, um, you know, pursue my, my life right now, my future, you know, mm -hmm. is because one thing that I notice in him is that he's a provider. He's right. a protector. He loves me unconditionally. You know, sometimes when you date people from other cultures, you know, you have those things in your mind of what you heard or what you say about black girls or African-Americans or, you know, but, you know, he... He said it. Yeah, I've heard these things. I know this, and I don't care. I love you. I love you. <laughs> Thank you, Bambi. Beautiful. Yeah. Oh, you giving me the ring already? Okay, Bambi. <laughs> so, it sounds like he's everything you wanted your brother to provide for you guys when nobody was around. That could be true, too. That could be true, too. Mm -hmm. yeah I did expect those things from my brother and I do today still I just feel <laughs> like it's his job <laughs> like right yeah but you, you know you know what you know how I look at it now like I could tell like from from what you shared with us right that you have a good heart you have you have a given heart you know never change that and he might not be able to acknowledge that on nobody but God sees all things you know what I'm yes. saying don't don't do things with the expectations of receiving, having them give it back or receiving things back because God sees what you're doing. And that's the reason why you are being blessed right now. Yeah. So don't worry about the things that they're not able to do for you, but you're able to do for them. Continue to be who you are. Continue to the, the love on people the way you do. And yes. even if they're not returning that back the same way of your expectations are. God, God's going, God's going to do it for you. Thank you. Yes. You feel me? Ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions for Green Eye Goddess, uh, please take the box once again, and you may begin to ask your questions right now. My last, uh, one of my last questions to you is, what are you doing now? What's your plans for the future? Um, well, I just changed my career. I was in healthcare for like 20 years. I just changed my career to insurance. So I'm now a claims adjuster. And so um, I just really want to achieve some goals that's kind of been on the list for a long time. You know, we all set goals and, you know, it's like well overdue. It's well overdue. Um, I never give up on myself. And I know that anything that I put my heart and mind to, I can accomplish. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I just have some goals that, you know, I feel like this new career can help me to achieve. Um, I'm ready to be a wife. You asked the question, do I want to get married uh, right now? Um, you know, if God say that the time is now, yes. Am I rushing into it like tomorrow? No. But do I love and respect the man that I'm with? Um, and I would, you know, if he was to ask me to be his wife, yes. Um, I'm not saying like, okay, right now, right now, today, let's go get married. No, because we getting to know each other, um, we learning to respect each other's difference. You know, when you come from different upbringings and different cultures, um, you have to get to know the person that you want to spend your life with. And so I feel like now it's a time that, you know, we get to know each other and, you know, get to grow together before we start to build together, because that's both of our goals, you know, to build. So before we can start to build together, let's get to know each other and make sure that we have the same 
goals and plans moving forward to our future. Let's go. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Green Eye Goddess. Uh, you can ask your questions in the comments. If you got any questions for Green Eye Goddess, please write them now or hit the plus sign coming as a guest and ask your questions. Let's go. And on this side, too, we are taking questions from you guys on the MM side as well. And thank you for getting me to point three. I appreciate all of you guys. Let's go. <laughs> so Bambi asks. Bambi asks, when will you start doing the dance workouts? Okay, so this week I have been practicing at home. Um, I'm... I'm a little, not too shy, but it has been, like I said, six or seven months since I did it live. So um, I'm just trying to get myself prepared behind the scene. Um, I don't want to come and I don't give you that energy that you're looking for. Um, I used to do cardio for two hours straight. So I want to be able to give you that same energy. I don't want to come and I'm here 30 minutes and I end or you know, so I'm practicing behind the scene. I did it this morning. I did it yesterday in my own home for like an hour. So we get in there. We get in there, Bambi. Thank you so much for believing in me, love. <laughs> We're going to be there soon. Um, Amaya asks, would you have more kids? Well, hmm, how can I say this? I don't want to be a baby mom. I want to be a wife. If I'm a wife and I become pregnant, then yes. Um, at this age, that's not in the forefront. You know, I'm 43, so it's not in the forefront to have a child. But when you, you know, you get married, maybe it's something that your husband wants. Right now, neither of us really need it. You know, we both have children, so it's not like a need for us. But if it happens during a the marriage, then yes, I would, I would have it. Mulatto Queen asks, what app did you find him on so I can get me a soccer player? Oh, my God. Get out of here, Mulatto. <laughs> get, <laughs> get out of here. Get out of here. Get out. Let's be like, I'm serious. Uh, where did we meet? Ah, oh, Badu. Badu. Erica Badu. The app is Badu. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Any other questions from the audience? Donna, do you have any questions? Yes. Hey, so you started the interview off with having set expectations for your brother. So now in conclusion, being that role kind of gave you her insight. Is it safe to say that you have better lens regarding your brother? And are you able or interested in reaching out and just talking about the issues you're having? Oh, Donna, 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 <laughs> Donna. You sound like the pastor. I mean, it's like you hear the message. You hear the message. Like, like, serious, my brother is sick. My brother is sick, like, to the point that my mom was thinking that he wouldn't even make it. So my mom is hurt inside because we broke it. And she have been begging me, just call him. He just want to hear your voice. And I said, but he's the one that did the wrong. He needs to call me. I'm stubborn like that, you know? What's and your sign, I'm, Green Eye? Sagittarius. I don't oh. feel like oh. I should just call him just because he's sick. You know what I'm saying? Like, you ain't called this person what? all year. That is a reason to call That him. is a reason you to call him. Days could be numbered, and then you'll be sitting there. What if, what if, what if, what you know, God forbid happen. today's his last day? Right. You got to do better. I got to do better. I haven't talked to my son in a year. I haven't talked to my brother in two years. Like, we can yeah. we can just cut you off. Like, Sagittarius is something else. Like We know, because y'all don't got a can of world. We can just be like, see you. Life will go on without you. I'm sorry, but... Yeah, I'm Nikki. sorry. Thank you, Donna. Another message. <laughs> I, I, I got to call my brother. What about your son, though? I, I heard you mention your son. Right. Oh, that's so painful. Like, I'm so glad you didn't dig too deep. But well, my son... Know, so. <laughs> yeah, my son, we haven't talked. He went to marry, got married, you know, a couple years ago. And he didn't invite me to the wedding. So ever since then, I've had bitterness in my heart. And when we talked about the situation, he said, you did the same thing. You went to another country and married somebody. And you didn't invite us either. 
Do you blame him? Yes, I do. You because still blame is- him? Yes. yes. What? Yes. Green eyes. Yes. 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 The black in your eyes. <laughs> Yes. Listen, all my friends was mad at me. You know why? Because we did that too. We yeah. didn't invite. We really didn't invite nobody. We just they went, went to Vegas too. Ray, like, Ray, <laughs> Ray to Rob and, and FC and, and, and everybody. They, they just to happened there, to, be to be there. there. We did not invite. We when they hit me up, I was like, I'm about to get married. It's like, where you at? I'm in like, Vegas. So we're in Vegas too. And boom, you know what I'm saying? Yes. Well, big locks I too. I know y'all think if big locks was there. Big locks was there for big locks was there for a wedding already. Oh my god, <laughs> That's and crazy. we just so happened to be getting yeah. Wow. So people Actually, think we invited them. We did not. I did not tell wedding. nobody, huh? Big locks and Raider Rob was in big locks and Raider Rob was in the same wedding. Mm-hmm. Another wedding, and, which was another wedding. That's what they was all out there for another wedding. We just so happened to be getting married mm-hmm. the day before that wedding. Right. Wow. Call them, Green. Hello. Oh, hey. <laughs> Call them. Oh, okay. You can't, you, can't, you can't live your life holding grudges, especially when it's something you did too. You know, it's better to be apart than to, to miss out on everything. I know you want to be strong and wrong. Mm-hmm. But you can't live your life being wrong. strong and wrong. You know when you know you want to know when you can when you find growth. You find growth when you can be like admit your wrongs and you can give in, even though you don't want to. But you can give in and be like, you know what, fuck it. Especially your son. That's that's where the growth is at. You don't want to do it, but you know what, it needs it needs to be done. Needs to write Especially that down, down, down. And that's growth. So you saying that's what you've been doing? You you growing strong and wrong. That's where right? the real growth is at. <laughs> strong and strong wrong. Strong and wrong. <laughs> I'm gonna call you in seventy, well, forty eight hours. Would your son? Mulatto Queen said, "Would your son answer if you call?" Oh my god, I don't know. Look at your stubborn ass. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, that one is hard. We'll even see. if even if the conversation like when you call in the conversation is like like here's how I feel and you know nah don't even text you can text after he don't answer but call call uh, call in <sighs> and let someone hear your voice is very powerful You're right <laughs> we mom to mom call him he wants to hear his mom's voice hey, and does he have any kids no. But he's okay. married. His wife has a disabled child that they take care of. So he's around children. We gonna follow, follow up, up too, there Green. We go. definitely gonna follow up. She got a second device. She can do it right now. No! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's do the call. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you're just entered, Green Eye Goddess is about to call her son that she hasn't spoken to in years. <laughs> That is not possible. <laughs> <laughs> you, they said, well, you got three to five business days. Okay. Oh, my God. They said, skip that right now. <laughs> uh, I can see how tense your face got when I said that. Oh, <laughs> man. You see? I'm like, oh. <laughs> What motivates you? My question is, what motivates you? Um... Just wanting to win, you know, wanting to win, wanting to do God's work. You know, um, like I said, I was brought up in a spiritual religion. and Which taught you forgiveness, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I have forgiven all of those people. I have forgiven, forgave, but I have not forget. <laughs> you, know, you can forget. <laughs> and, and that I get, but to me, I feel like if they didn't do anything that's like harsh or horrible to you, like some people, like for an example, I wish you death. Yeah, you know, like I got, I got four brothers, and out of the four brothers, one of them, I'm, I'm, I love all of them. I call them, I check up on them periodically, but there's one brother, like hell no, you know what I'm saying? And that's you see my niece, 
that I adopted, that's yeah. his daughter. Okay. But that's because he's so ungrateful. Yeah. I'm so just... ungrateful. He's so disrespectful. You know what I'm saying? And that that's one person. Now nah, I'm not going to reach out to you. Now, if he reached out to me, that's a different story. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But he don't never see wrong. He's one of those people that blames the world mm -hmm. or the, the shit he does. No, actually, he's a freaking Taurus, an April Taurus. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's my two sons, April 1st and April 9th. A week apart, 13 years apart, but a week apart. Oh, yeah, but they're not a Taurus. They're Aries. Oh, Aries. So they're, Aries, they're, Aries, they're Aries, a little, Yeah, they're a little emotional. So you got to understand that, too. And a little bipolar. Mm. That's Aries. Sorry if y'all in here. She asks, what is your first step <laughs> in forgiveness? Bougie, Arlene, to answer your question. Um, I always take everything to God. I'm serious. I pray about it first. And, you know... We know what the word says. So that is it. A lot of things, I just pray about it. And, you know, ask God to clear my heart. Ask God to clear my heart because, you know, you can't move on with life with hatred. And I do understand that. You cannot be right. blessed, you know, when you have all of this bitterness and things in your heart and mind. You won't, get, you won't receive the blessings that you're supposed to receive. So how I've learned to deal with these things is just pray about it. I have not stopped praying for him. I have she not. don't disown her child. She, I wouldn't want to classify <laughs> it as that. She don't disown no, 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 him. No. She's just not reaching out. Yeah, we just not communicating. But, you know, yeah. She acknowledged that's her child. She loves her kid, but. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, um, any other questions? Some um, Prettiest Nikki said, how come? Um, just because he chose to get married without inviting me, so I felt like he didn't want me to be a part of his life. And you got married without inviting him? Right. <laughs> and you was living your best life, and he has to do the same thing. See, I think you have a problem when people start to separate <laughs> and do their own thing without you. Yeah, probably so. <laughs> you did the same thing to your brother. You mad at your brother because he went married, he's living his life, and you know, and you expected you had expectations, and that's another thing. I'm gonna tell you something. You gotta let go of your expectations of people. You're holding them to this high level, and when they don't meet your standards, you distance yourself from them and you're upset with them because they didn't live up to your expectation. So imagine if somebody wanted you to live up to their expectation, and because you're not meeting their expectation, they don't even know you. You you don't even know they have those expectations of you. Did you yes. tell your brother? Did you ever express to your brother that these are my expectations for you? And that's what I was going to say. It's okay to have expectations of others, but you have to communicate what they are and give them the opportunity to say, yes, I'm willing to meet or no. Right. Common sense. It's not. Common sense is really not that common. <laughs> common sense. Listen, if I would have, I would have cursed every motherfucker out on this app who had these <laughs> expectations that I'm supposed to be at every one of their fucking events. Right. Yeah. I don't know if they thought I was a uh, Bill Gates or somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Big giant. Yeah, but the way you were I was fucking it on that, uh, fucking it up on the app for what I could do. But even with me fucking it up on the app, right? Wanted more. People wanted more and yes. more. And yes. more, and then what do you want me to be left with? Nothing. Nothing. Yeah, I'm almost done. Now I'm out here kicking rocks and shit. Yes, yes, Trying yes. Trying to make me a tripod instead of buying one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? But listen, I, I had to go through that, too. And it's it's a big lesson. But I had to let go of my expectations. I had very high expectations of people mm -hmm. that I was around, that I, my friends, the people that I called my friends and they're not on my level. And I'm like, well, you need to be. And I have to meet people on their level. On and their level. If that's mm -hmm. where they at, I have to accept that. You have to learn mm -hmm. to accept whatever level they are. You got to understand that not everyone thinks like green eye goddess. Yes. So what you might call common sense, they don't see it that way not they come that's what makes us all unique we all look at life differently yes you You're have right. these ex high expectations if you don't tell someone what your expectations is in a friendship or in a relationship then they're gonna do whatever they do as long as you allow it but now if they know your expectations now they know that's what they gotta live up to 
Yes. Donna said her expectations is she's not sitting in the back of a plane. I know those expectations. <laughs> now I know when I'm booking a flight, it got to be business class or first class or she ain't going. Really? Yes, I told her that at the beginning before we got Wow. Married. You set those expectations. Okay. If I'm with you, I'm with you. I don't want you to be with nobody else. That's an expectation. I don't want you to be with nobody else. But if you don't set these expectations, then people's not going to know they're fucking up when they answer a call. And you're like, well, who's that? Oh, this is my friend. But wait a I looked through your thing and it looked like I was more than friend. Well, we used to be, oh, you still friends with your exes? That's an expectation. My expectation is that you can't be friends with your exes. Funny you, you said that. <laughs> because you... we went through that. <laughs> but I never gave any expectations. You're right. But those, you got to tell people Right. what your expectations is so and then you will know in the beginning whether someone is able to keep up with your expectations or not if they tell you no you know there's possibly not going to work out due to that right yes but your son didn't know your ex his ex, your expectations was you desperately wanted to be at his wedding he didn't know that i didn't know that <laughs> when, when we're doing these, when we doing these she, planning, she's looking at it like that's a given. But then in his mind, it was a given. But to me, yours, right? But I can, uh, I, I'll, I'll use my life as the same thing. When Donna and I got married, once again, we didn't tell nobody. Do you know? For a few years, because I wasn't reaching out, but they wasn't reaching out. All my sisters was mad at me. My friends was mad at me. They didn't really like voice it or express it too much. But when I came over there, oh, I felt the wrath. But I didn't know. But to me, I'm like, well, we just got married, like right now to get married, but we plan on having a wedding. We plan on having you all there. And now I desperately want to have the wedding and have them so all once there. Once again, nobody because... knew your expectations. Yeah. Exactly. You... But yeah. everyone had an expectation right. that they should have been invited. It yeah. wasn't personal. Everyone took it personal. Right. Yes. My own daughter wasn't there. My mother wasn't there. So, you know? Yes. They still, you know, they feel some type of way, but it, you know, it is what it is. You can't just not talk to him and then waste all those years. Yeah, you're is right. Is that the only issue? Is that is that it? Yeah, that's the only issue. Her petty ass. You cut him off just because you didn't go to his wedding? Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, I felt like it's disrespectful <laughs> to your mom. Like, how you can you do that? You as you said. <laughs> <laughs> like, you for him. <laughs> Have you ever met his wife? That's a good question. Yes. I went there on a vacation because they they both live in Utah. So I went there on a vacation to meet her for, I think it was like the 4th of July. We all had a big barbecue together. We cooked together, you know. So I thought we had a good relationship. But it seems that he's turned to against me for some reason. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. No, but the longer you wait, the longer you wait, it it does allow people to pass judgment. Yeah. You know? And and, and when you do give it a chance, remember, remember she she don't you don't know her expectations of you. She don't know you. And you don't have any expectations of her. So welcome her with open arms because this person is a big part of your son's life. Yeah. Whether you like it or not. I you know agree. You know, I have no problem, you know, if they want me to be a part of their life, I'm here. You know, I'm always going to be mom. But, you know, even her communication is kind of like a friendship. She messaged me like, girl this, girl that. I'm like, wait, maybe I don't want... <laughs> like, we not them type of friends. You know, I'm you married to my son. Wait, so she messages you? Time to time, she'll message me like my birthday, different things he won't, but she will. Like, happy Aww, birthday. Aw, so look, I'm that's to, dope. I'm trying to get your son to call you, but the respect is like, girl, like we friends. You know, it's not like I respect you as the mother of the man that I'm married to. It's more like a friendship. But, but yeah, but that don't mean she don't respect you as the mother. That means she, she that's the bond she wants with you. She want to be able to talk freely, and you should accept that. I will, you know? I will. That I someone's will. able to be like, but girl, let me so tell different. you, I'm trying to talk to your son. This nigga is not listening. <laughs> it's just different. You know? But, yeah, it's different because we couldn't address, yeah. you know, our parents that way. So, you know, it's just I, I, I And I get that, too. But mm -hmm. this these new millennium of kids, 
Yeah. Like my daughter texted me the other day, like you went to your mother's house. You just need to make your presence known. And once you make your presence known in her life, then she'll probably get a, she will probably be able to get a taste of you and your wants. And maybe then it will change up. But it seems like you haven't given her the opportunity to get to know you. So I think yeah. when she fully gets to know you, then she'll be able to address you correctly. Maybe you're not. Right. You just spoiled. I am. <laughs> and one shit your way. <laughs> you I spoiled am. and one shit your way. That's some Sagittarius <laughs> shit right there. It's true. It's true. Baby, get in the box and knock some sense into green eyes. <laughs> <laughs> but now, like, the, the other day, like, you know, there was what, 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 what vacation was this? Spring vacation? I don't know, right? Uh, she uh messaged me now you with your mama your mama got money or whatever right. it might not be a lot but she can afford to get you whatever you want she calls me and asks me for money mind yeah. you she don't punish me i just let you go to your mama house to give us a break you know <laughs> we was on vacation <laughs> be quite honest you know what i'm saying right. and when i told her no about the money she texted me and said you oh you ain't gang for real Gang. Hey, nigga, you think I'm one of your fucking friends? <laughs> I ain't you gang are... for real. You ain't gang. What do you think oh, you talking man. to? They say so you anything. You ain't gang. You better ask your damn mother. <laughs> is hey, she gang gang? This is a, when you go away, this is a break from you running my pockets. Right. Man. So, you know, but they got to know. And I, when, when, when she came home, and when I came home, I said, you better stop talking to me like that. So, with that being said, if you feel like it makes you uncomfortable for saying that, be like, hey, you know, I'm an adult, you know, please address me like this. No hard feelings, but, like, address me like this, if that makes you uncomfortable. Or share that story with her. Like, where I'm from, we can't do that. Like, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, different environments. Set your expectations. I but don't it. let that be the first day. You call I already focus know on what's number one. <laughs> first gets to the sun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And a brother. Well, just yeah, she just want to have that mother-in-law presence in her life. Oh, yeah. her we got, um, Bambi her. said, we giving you three to five business days that right. we going to follow up. Period. I can follow up next show. <laughs> <laughs> Not next show. Uh-uh. <laughs> Wait, you mean next week you're going to come and give us the follow-up? Yeah, I I'll do that. Okay. We could do that. We could do that. Okay. That's cool. That's Just call him and say you love him and apologize for missing out. Well, she don't need to apologize, but just be like, I miss you. Like, you know what I'm saying? I want to build. And one of the things I did with my sisters when I was out there was, because we're pointing fingers like, well, you didn't reach out. You didn't reach out. Yeah. You didn't reach out. Yeah. But like, babe, just apologize and say you're gonna do better. Damn, they was going back and forth, back and forth. Yeah, that's yeah, exactly. It was like our, an hour. Donna's like, <laughs> our like, communication a year ago right. was that you never call, you never reach out, you never. That was his words. So you're right. You're right. It's it's you know, it's it's, it's a whole pointing finger. That the point is, we both got to do better. Let's just we do have better. to. Yes. You know, it's yes. not a matter of who. It's who's gonna start doing better. Yes. Honestly, life is so short and we, we tend to say that, but we don't understand the reality of that. Like life is so short. You just never know. Yeah. And you don't want to have that guilty burden on your heart. Like, damn, what if those what ifs would drive you crazy? Oh yeah. You're right. Everything is right. <laughs> Everything yeah. is right. My last, my, um, one of my last questions to you is what motivates you now? Uh, I just wanted to win. I did say that. And just yeah. wanted to win. Yeah. Okay. No, I had to. I had to make sure she finished that thought, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't think she finished it. You just wanting to win. Well, pretty much that, you know. And seeing the people around me, you know, always live a best life. Like I'm more, less. Okay. I know it sounds like I'm selfish, but I'm really not. Like I really like to see people around me winning and doing great you know so whatever it takes to help somebody else win or rise i'm there i'm there for that i've kind of like put myself on a back burner a lot of times just to see other people you know to win and do great um even on the app i've had the opportunity i've met all pretty much all the admins you know when we were merged 
uh, Chris Casper, Melody, you know, I had the support. Chris Casper, we was talking to the point where he was trying to schedule me for a feature show. He asked me, you know, when can we schedule a phone call so that we can get you going? You know, I've always had great people on my team, you know, here to support me. But, you know, sometimes we all just have different paths in life. We all just have different paths in life. So it's right. not that I haven't had the opportunities to rise on this platform or to, you know, like have a feature show or be a royal badge or a top badge. But, you know, sometimes I just feel like I'm not ready for that stage in my life. I have things going on in my real life and I know I would not be able to get a platform 100%. So instead of me taking that opportunity. Now I use it to help other people. If other people, I see them doing great, I'll tell them, message Janet, message this one, message that one, you know, go to role model show, go to this one, you know, to help build them up to win. Um, if I know somebody having auctions and battles, I will recommend like a Bambi or a different new people like, oh, you should go to this person, a favorite this person, you know, to help other people win. So that brings me joy. It brings me happiness. To see, you know, the new people come in with their good content. Most of them, you know, they're young and they have good content. Who motivates you on the app? (laughs) 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 Ah, Well, I got to tell y'all. It's right to rob. <laughs> it really is. Um, and 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 not for what other people may say or see. The thing about him is when I first came on the platform three years ago, mm-hmm. during that time, uh, like I said, I was visiting other people's streams or whatever, and I didn't even know who he was. I didn't know who you was. You know, I didn't know a lot of people that was at the top at that time. Right. And so um I think around that time, you know, it was like a book read a mocha type of verse thing and he came in and he was shooting or, you know what I'm saying? I was like, wow, you know? And so I started to watch him and, you know, hang around his 